In this lesson we're going to look at equivalent fractions and uh, how we can use this idea of equivalent fractions to write answers that we give as fractions in the best way possible. Uh, and, and that best way we refer to as um, lowest terms. Um, but to just to start our exploration of this concept, let's do kind of a silly example here. Suppose I have a pizza. I know that's not a perfect circle, but just bear with me here. And suppose that um, I ate exactly half of it. And so I could color in half to indicate how much I've eaten. And so the picture there really is represented by the fraction one half. Now suppose uh, I told you, by the way, the pizza was cut into four equal slices. Okay, fine. Well, I still ate half, uh, but now if we look at the fraction that's been eaten, I would say, well, I ate two out of four slices. And then if I amended what I just said and said, well, actually it was cut into eight slices, well, again, that doesn't change the reality of the fact that I ate half the pizza, but again, it does perhaps change how we might naturally write this fraction. We might say, okay, well, I've got four of those slices colored red out of eight. And so these three fractions here are, um, are a good example of what we refer to as equivalent fractions. They look very different, but they're representing the same fraction or the or the same number. So, uh, so let's talk real quick before we move on from this example about mathematically what's the relationship between these fractions. Let's take a look at uh, one half and two fourths um, to start with. So. Uh, how could I mathematically go from one-half to two-fourths? Well, one thing I notice is that the, uh, both the top and bottom are exactly double the top and bottom of one-half. So it looks like if I multiply the top by two and the bottom by two, I get two-fourths. Let's talk about starting at four-eighths and trying to go back to one-half. How could I go from four-eighths back to one-half? Well, it looks like maybe if I divided the top and bottom of this fraction by 4, I would get 1 half back again. And so those uh, two observations lead us to these two statements here. So the fraction A over B and A times C over B times C are equivalent fractions. The fraction A over B and A divided by C over B divided by C are equivalent fractions. So what this says is that you can multiply the top and bottom or divide the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number and it does not change the number. It changes how it looks but not the actual value of that number. So this is how we're able to write fractions differently as equivalent fractions. So the main thing we're going to do with this in this particular lesson is we are going to use this idea to write fractions in lowest terms. Okay, So this idea of writing a fraction in lowest terms is really um, trying to get us to write our answers to questions in the best way possible. So I think we could agree that going back to the pizza example for just one more moment, that if you ask me how much of the pizza I ate, probably the response I would give you is one half, right? Regardless of how many slices there actually were, if I ate half a pizza, I'd probably just simply said, or simply say I ate half the pizza. And so we would refer to this fraction as the best answer to that question, and we would also call it the fraction that's in lowest terms. All right, so the the formal definition of a fraction lowest terms is a fraction is in lowest terms when the only common factor of the numerator and denominator is 1. 
In other words, there's nothing besides 1 that can divide into the top and bottom evenly. And obviously that's the case with 1 half. So let's use this idea and the idea of the second sentence here of a over b and a divided by c over b divided by c are really the same uh, are, are equivalent fractions. Let's use those facts to write each of these in lowest terms. So if you see an example like 12 fifteenths where the numbers aren't overly large, my suggestion is is to try to find the greatest common factor right away. What is the largest number that goes into both 12 and 15? And I think we can see without too much work here that the largest number that goes into both is 3. And so what we're going to do is divide the top and the bottom of 12 fifteenths by 3. As long as I divide the top and bottom by the same thing, what I've just done is completely legal. And what do I get here? A 4 on top and a 5 on bottom. Now we look at 4 and 5. Since we did divide by the greatest common factor, we know that nothing else besides 1 can be divided into these. Um, but we always just double check, okay, do they have any common factors besides 1? No. And so I know that this is in lowest terms. Now looking at 48 over 108. So you certainly could find the greatest common factor here. That would be completely fine. Find the greatest common factor um, of 48 and 108. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could just find a common factor between the two. So, um, you know, they're both even. Anytime you have an even on both top and bottom, you could always just divide by 2. So 48 divided by 2 is 24. 108 divided by 2 is 54. Okay, so 24, 54. Is there anything common to both 24 and 54 besides 1? Well, sure there is. Um, 6 comes to mind, right? Because 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 9 is 54. So let's divide by 6 on the top and bottom. So this process of writing a fraction in lowest terms does not have to be done all in one step. It's okay to take multiple hacks at it and, and divide multiple times until you get down to something you know the top and bottom have a greatest common factor of 1, and that's what we have here. 4 and 9 share no common factors besides 1. Alright, so now let's look at this last one here, 147 over 392. Not the friendliest of numbers here. So, where to start? Um, boy, they're not both even, so 2 can't go into both of them. And let's see, how about our 3 trick? Remember our 3 trick of adding the digits and seeing if they add to something divisible by 3. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 7 is 12. Okay, so the top's divisible by 3. 3 plus 9 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Boy, but the bottom isn't. So this is frustrating. Some of the easier numbers that uh, we would like to try to divide top and bottom by aren't working. So when you have a tough one like this, here's the strategy I suggest. Take the number that you think is easiest to work with. Okay, and, and uh, your number that you think is easier might not be the same as the number I think is easier. So you might automatically pick the smaller number, 147, to work with, and that's fine. Uh, I'm going to pick 392 just because it is even, and I can count on being able to divide it by 2 at first. And so just pick one of those numbers and, and prime factor it. So I can break that down into 2. And boy, I might need a little bit of scratch work here. 392 divided by 2. And let's see here. Looks like 196. So 2 and 196. 
Well, 196 is also divisible by 2. Might as well just do that again. Uh, and then I got 98. Okay. And then, let's see, 2 again, and then 49 is what you'd get if you divide 98 by 2. And then 49 is a special product, and so we get 7 and 7. Okay, so how is that helpful? Well, remember that we already eliminated 2 as a possibility of a common factor between the two, because 147 is odd. So you know that these three here are going to be kind of useless in terms of trying to divide the top and bottom. So here's, here, here's the conclusion. The only thing I need to try to divide 147 by is 7. Because even though other numbers may go into 147, and in fact we already decided 3 does, that doesn't really matter. Because uh, the only thing I really care about is if the number also divides into 392, and the only other number besides 2 that does is 7. So over here on the side, we'll divide 147 by 7 and see if anything good happens. 7 goes into 14 twice. 7 goes into there once. Okay. So here's what we have. I'm going to need to move this down a little bit because I... Oops. There we go. Didn't plan my room very well. So what this is telling me I can do is that I can take 147 divided or over 392 and I can divide top and bottom by 7. I can see from over here that I get 21 on top and then my 392 when I divide that by 7 I don't have room to do it right here so you'll have to forgive me but I just do some long division here 392 divided by 7 is going to give me 56 and now notice 21 and 56 share another 7 in common so that's great I can divide by 7 on top and bottom once again and I'll end up with 3 on top 8 on bottom and 3 and 8 share nothing in common. So that is my answer written in lowest terms.